Hey guys, hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to see how to create an Azure Databricks workspace. So first is we need to pick a subscription. So I have a free trial. So I'm picking up the free trial. If you have a paid subscription, then you can pick on that. Then the second is you need to uh, pick a resource group. If you have already created a resource group, you can choose that resource group you have created or you can create a new resource group. The resource group is like a folder where you keep all your services together. So let me keep a like resource group of NYIT, whatever I have created. Then you need to give a workspace name. So let me give a workspace name like Azure Databricks. Okay. And you need to choose a region. So while picking up the region, you need to be uh, like very careful. You need to see that where your storage accounts and where your ADF and other services are located. So it will be very easy if you choose a region which you already uh, like where your storage account already is placed. If you have placing storage account some other region and if you are placing your uh, Azure Databricks in another region. So while fetching the data while extracting the data from the ADLS, you may feel some lag and some uh, time delay in that. So you can pick up a region which is uh, more suited for you, okay? Or uh, wherever your ADLS is, you can pick the same region. Then it is asking for the pricing trial. So there are actually two types. One is standard and one is second is premium. Or you can go with the trial one which comes with the, that is trial of premium which comes with the 14 days of free Databricks units. So let me take or pick up the 14 days trial, free trial. Then you have a lot of options. So I'll not touch uh, anything on networking, advanced tags and create and review. So let me just click on review. So it is validating. Yeah, validation got successfully. Then I'll click on create. So it will take few minutes to deploy your Azure Databricks workspace. Yeah, so the deployment is in progress. Here you can see that the deployment is, improved, uh, is completed and you can click on this go to resources to check the, your Azure Databricks resource. Yeah, you can see all the details here, uh, which resource group it is, which location and your URL and what is your pricing tier and so on. So you can click on launch the workspace. So you will be redirected to the Azure Databricks account. So it will ask you for the sign in. You can take a same sign in it will automatically uh, sign in for you using your azure credentials yeah so let me compare you quickly like how uh, it is different from your community edition so let me log in for the community edition also yeah so what's your data project so building uh, building and streaming and ETL. Let me click on that. Yeah, so this is how your Azure Databricks looks like. So this is your uh, email address, personal email address, and this is get started. Let me close this. And there are a lot of new features in this Azure Databricks, uh, a paid one, obviously. And at the top or the left side, you can see we have three different workloads like data science and engineering, machine learning and SQL. Whereas when you compare it with the community edition, we have only two workloads that is data science and engineering and machine learning. And you can see there are a lot many features in Azure Databricks. So let me show you here. So here we have repos. You can see you have a repos here. Sorry, guys, just a minute. Yeah, so you have a repos here. We do not have a repos here. And you have a partner connect here. And we do not have a partner connect here. And here you can see this is Microsoft's Azure. And here you can see only Databricks. So this community edition is of uh, like AWS is providing this community edition. So let me close this. Now uh, let me explore a few of the things like when you go to partner connect, 
you can directly connect your Databricks to any of this uh, third party tools like data ingestion. You can go with Fitran. If you are going for a BI and visualization, Power BI and Tableau, you can connect and data preparation and transformation DPT and so on. There are so many other tools where you can directly connect, connect through Databricks. So when I go to the first, uh, like creating a cluster in data view, so this is a completely different interface. You can see you have a catalog, database, tables, and so on. When you go to compute, so here we get uh, two more extra features here. And obviously job clusters are cannot be created in our, uh, in our community edition, but here you can create a job clusters. But for that, you need to create a cluster first, and then you have a pools and then you have a cluster policies also. So let me click on create cluster. So I am not sure that whether we can create a cluster or not in this community edition. So in this Azure Databricks, I'll tell you the reason also. So here it is asking me the policy. So I'm not touching any of the policies. You can change the policy you want. So now let me keep it for unrestricted. And here you have multi node option and the single node option. So if I click on single node, you can see that we get only one driver which is having 14 GB memory and four core. And you can see the cost also, it is coming around 0.75 Databricks units per hour. Uh, but when you come to the community edition, you do not find any interface as such. So here we do not have any option, just you click on create clusters and put a cluster name and there is no charge or anything. And by default, we are getting only one driver and that is of 15 GB memory and two cores. But when you compare it with the uh, like Azure Databricks single node, you get 14 GB memory with four cores. Okay. So depending on your workload, you can choose your single node or multi node. If I click on multi node, you can see here. Excuse me. Okay. So if you choose multi node, you can see there is a like you can see many uh, minimum workers and maximum workers. I'm talking about the worker type. So depending upon your workload, you can choose between minimum worker and maximum worker. So you can see here your minimum workers are like two, which comes around 28 GB because each is having 14 GB memory. You can choose from here 14 GB memory. You can choose from the worker type and maximum if you are using eight workers each of 14 GB you get 112 GB similarly you can calculate the course also so if you are having uh, like we have seen the architecture of spark if you remember we have one driver and we have uh, two workers or eight workers or four workers depending upon our workload so you can just imagine one driver is continuously running and if there is a low or uh, your data set is very small then there will be two workers running so in total there will be 28 plus 14 GB storage and when it comes to cores so four cores of driver and eight cores of two worker nodes will be running depending upon your workload the scalability can go up to your worker node can increase up to eight workers when it is working with eight worker nodes then you get 32 cores and plus four cores of driver. So your course will change from 12 cores to 36 cores depending upon your workload. Then it will ask you for the access mode. So you can uh, like choose between this. Uh, so this is also the new feature that we got in the access node. Shared Python and SQL, no isolation shared. Let me keep a single user. If you are using a multiple user, then you can change your access mode. Then when it comes to performance, we have the Databricks runtime version. So uh, we generally recommend using this LTS that is a long term support 10.4 as a long term support. You have a latest feature also like uh, better version 11.3, which is having the spark latest version and the Scala is the same one. Okay. And uh, let us talk about this photon acceleration later on. So this photon acceleration which accelerates your Apache workload and it will uh, like reduce the cost per workload, but it will be definitely costlier than this. 
So you can see the pricing here. It is giving you around 2.25 to 6.75. If I use the photon acceleration and engine to like give uh, like to give me a fast results, then you can go to this photon engine, but the costing will be definitely higher. So let me not choose photon for now. And you can choose the worker type. So you can choose your worker type from 14 GB, 4 cores, 28 GB, 8 cores, and so on. You can choose from your HDD, SDD, and so on, and so on. Okay, by default, let me keep it for standard S3. And the driver type is also similar to the worker type. You can change from minimum workers to to maximum. Let me take it 4, or let me take it to 3, something like that. So depending on that, you can see the pricing here, it is changing. And this spot instances, like if you tick the spot instances, like definitely you will be getting two workers. If they are available, they are available, you will be getting the maximum workers. If they are not available, then it will work on this two workers only. So you can see that, use the spot instances to save the cost. If spot instances are evicted to due to unavailability, on demand instances will be deployed to replace the evicted instances. But the time can there will be a little bit of latency when you choose a spot instances because when the worker nodes are available at that time, you will be getting those worker nodes. Otherwise, you will get on demand or uh, it will not be automatically scaled up to maximum worker. So you can to save the cost, you can choose the spot instances. Then you have enable auto scaling. So it will automatically scale from two worker nodes to maximum four worker nodes. Automatically it will scale. If I remove this, like disable this, you can see that all your eight worker nodes will be activated. So like to save some cost again, you can enable the auto scaling. Let me take this four. And then if your cluster is inactive for 120 minutes, it will automatically terminate. So let me keep it for 30 minutes. 30 minutes, if I'm not using, it will automatically terminate. Now, I think these are all the features. And let me click on create clusters and let us see what happens here. So it is creating a cluster. In community edition, it is very simple. We just create like we give a name for example i'll give a name called azure uh, data bricks and click on create cluster so it will create a cluster without asking you like what worker type what worker node and so on So we need some time to create a cluster. Let us wait for a few minutes. 